Java EE Application Scenarios In this lesson, we will look at the different application scenarios in Java EE Application Development. We can use the Java EE Programming Model for all the enterprise applications because it is flexible and also supports a variety of client types with both the web container and EJB container as an optional one. Here is the diagrammatic representation of Java EE the programming model. This picture reflects a range of possible application configurations. Here we can see both the browser client and the standalone client, which was developed using Core Java. It can communicate directly to the web container and EJB container to do processing. It can directly access the database, i.e. the EIS resources. Browser Client can also access the database through the web container or the EJB container. Here we can have more than one web container and the EJB container that may be in the same machine or in a different machine. Browser Client can access the EJB container through the web container. Let's discuss the various application scenarios. Let's start with multi-tier application. As we have seen earlier in the architecture that a multi-tier application has multiple tiers based on the application. Here is the diagrammatic representation of a multi-tier application. In this application scenario, the browser uses HTML, HTTP and XML to communicate with the web container. Here, for the web container is having many web components that are dedicated to handling the application's presentation and its logic. The web container uses the servlets, JSP pages and XML to generate the dynamic content. It also uses the Java mail. The EJB container contains the application components that use EIS resources to service requests from the web tier. The EJB container uses the Enterprise Beans, JMS, or Java Messaging Service, JTA, Java Transaction APIs, and finally the JDBC APIs to communicate with the EIS resources. This architecture separates the data access from the application's user interface. Let's look at the application scenario which uses the standalone client. As we discussed earlier, the standalone clients can be implemented in the Java language or in any other programming language. Standalone clients can be at any of these types. Standalone clients can access the EIS resource through the web container. In this, the presentation logic will be the client tier. The web tier handles business logic and may directly access EIS resources. Normally, the business logic is implemented as Enterprise Beans because of the advantages of the rich Enterprise Beans component model. Standalone Java application clients also access the EIS resources directly using JDBC APIs or Java EE connectors. In this scenario, Presentation and business logic are integrated into a single application. So this scenario looks like classic two-tier client-server architecture. Another type of standalone client are the EJB clients that interact directly with the enterprise beans in an EJB container within an EJB server. This diagram shows you clearly the interaction of EJB clients with the EIS resources. Here, the client can directly access the Enterprise Beans and the EJB server accesses EIS resources using the JDBC API and the Java EE Connector architecture. Next, web-centric application. In many cases, the use of Enterprise Beans will result in an overhead. So, for this purpose, Java EE provides the flexibility to avoid the EJB container and implements both the presentation and business logic in the web container. 
Now we are looking at the diagram of the web-centric application. Here, the browser is communicated with the web container and the web container uses the JDBC or any other connectors to access the EIS resources. The final type is business-to-business -business scenario. Here, this type of scenario focuses on peer-level interactions between both the web and EJB containers. In the Java EE programming model, we can create the loosely coupled connections between the web containers with the help of XML data messaging over HTTP. Also with the support of JMS, Message Driven Beans, and the Java APIs for XML, we can create loosely coupled connections between the EJB containers. Understanding all these scenarios will help you more while developing the applications, like understanding the workflow of application. The tiers for an application and connectivity between the tiers will also help. If you want to know more about these various scenarios, refer to the book Designing Enterprise Applications with J2EE.